Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Cult Film Review. I am your host, Cody Everett. This week, we are talking about American Movie. As always, I have the same ragtag crew with me. I have the owner-operator, Bluefield Audio. He's also the producer of this podcast. He is Kyle Smith. Yeah, what's up? I also have the VP of Acquisitions for Brain Damage Films and Midnight Studios. He is Chris Willenbrecht. Hey, what's up? He is the proprietor <laughs> of the most popular blog on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> friendly f- neighborhood filmmaking. You fucked it. Uh, up. Well, he's going to also friendly neighborhood filmmaking dot com. <laughs> Michael Salucio. Oh yeah, friendly neighborhood filmmaking dot com. I already said it good once. You don't got to say it good twice. I think we you said didn't it do it. You didn't in Savage. I want to say your website good. Let me try it. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't macho man it like you did. You didn't You're right. macho man it. All right, guys, so with that being said, let's start the show. Your Hollywood system stole our sex and co-opted our violence, so there's nothing left for our kinds of movies. <laughs> I did not hit her. It's not true. Clopex. 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 Up yours, baby. Me and Bubba, my little brother, listen to you every night. Where in the hell are we? I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> <laughs> that was so bad. All right, so um, we are here to talk about American Movie uh, tonight. Uh, this is Chris's pick. Um, it certainly is. So, the Chris. What does that mean? Uh, <laughs> no, no, my first question for you is, and I don't know if you realize this, um, if you're not into our deep episodes, go ahead and turn off the uh, podcast now. Um, <laughs> we, don't, we don't know that. We don't know we that. Don't know it, that. It, it could I, be. I do uh, know that. We I don't do. know where it's going to go, Cody. Uh, I know where I'm taking it. Uh, <laughs> um, so, Chris, did you realize when you picked this movie, okay, why did you pick this movie, and did you realize when you picked this movie that uh, you were going to touch on some feelings? Is that what... And are group. you feeling feelings after I'm, this film? I'm feeling some feelings after this film. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I didn't know I was going to touch on any feelings. Um, American Movie is a documentary that I saw uh, probably when I was in high school. Go ahead and give the synopsis also while you're at it. And so uh, it's okay. So it's cert- it's it's about um, Mark Bouchard, who is a very enthusiastic, eccentric, uh, very low budget filmmaker, and his whole goal is just to make it big, making films. And uh, he lives in Milwaukee, and he's an alcoholic. And basically, um, a documentary crew follows him and his group of friends, who are all characters, uh, throughout Milwaukee to shoot both. Well, he's originally trying to shoot Northwestern, which is a feature film. Can't get it done, so he makes a short film called Coven, not Coven. Yeah, Coven, to finance. (laughs) To finance, to get the money to sell the units so that he could make Northwestern, which was the feature he wanted to make. So, like, two people, a sound like a sound person and the director camera operator followed him around for, I would assume years. I don't think it ever two really, years. was it two years? It was two years. So yes. for two years through all, all the bullshit and all the good times and all everything. And then, um, all, all along the way, Mark is constantly trying to get money from his, uh, uncle Bill who, uh, lives in a trailer park and holds on to his money very tight. And a lot of people, I, I was surprised to find out, uh, thought this was not, not real people that these were actors in this film so hold on though uh kind of going back before we get into that because that is kind of something i want to talk about too um why'd you pick this movie uh i think it's hilarious i love it i think it's inspiring as a filmmaker to see um people who would literally have almost nothing still trying to create this art so I, i think it's inspiring as a filmmaker um you definitely go through some moments where you're like this is bare bones and I've been there. Like if you've made movies, like you've done it like the most cheap way you could do it with mm-hmm. like the, uh, you know, mediocre actors and you just wanted. To... So following him, you're like, put yourself in his shoes. And even though they're quirky characters, you start to really identify with them and like them over the span of time. Okay. Um, so has anyone not seen this movie before? Has everybody pretty much seen this movie? Seen it. Seen I, it. I think I'm the only person that has, Never seen this. This is the first time I've ever seen this film. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I believe Chris is the one that told me to watch this like many years ago when it first came out. Yeah, I think he's the person who showed me this also. Um, so, uh, with that being said, this was kind of difficult for me as far as like when you, you first said this movie, I was kind of like shit in the bed on this one, right? <laughs> I was kind of like, oh, what the fuck are we going to talk about, right? And the reason I said that is because like from a film standpoint, it's a documentary, right? Mm. E- e- on a documentary, I feel like you live or die by your subject matter, not really much how by it's shot, um, you know what I mean, stuff yeah. like that. So it's kind of like, well, what the hell are we going to review? Mm-hmm. I disagree with you. Okay, well, 
Elaborate, please. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think that uh, you are dead in the water based on what your subject is. I think the way that you shoot something actually does provide a narrative. It's, it, it, I think a filmmaker can take what is known as maybe a boring subject yeah. to some to some filmmakers that don't know how to do it oh. and then make it interesting. I, I think, chalk that I think up that's all about. Yes, I, do. I, do. I agree. No, I think in documentaries, the editor is king. Yeah. And I think it is a... That's how you tell the story correctly. It does. I think with all great documentaries that I've ever seen is you can take any subject, whether it be uh, whales at SeaWorld or uh, porn stars or whatever that you're doing, and you can, if you can create a narrative something that is a story from beginning to end and show the progression of a character, however you edit it, I think you can make a fantastic documentary out of anything, really, mm-hmm. quite mm-hmm. honestly. Well, yeah. that's not what I'm arguing. What I'm arguing is, is it's, it's harder to review it on, okay, I can't, I can't, it's harder for me to review this film basis on shot shots, right? I, I think that, uh, yeah, it, especially with a documentary, it gets, just getting your guy in frame is enough. Mm-hmm. It, it it's not about cinematography. It's about capturing the story and capturing what they have to say yep. and getting that on on screen. Yeah. Um. And capturing those special moments, I think, is the most important thing about documentary. And I think this movie has a lot of those moments mm-hmm. and a lot of like and, and and they they picked a subject who I don't know how many hours of footage they shot or how much of this film was cut down, but like they captured like the magic of the character. Because it, it almost doesn't feel real life. They no. just don't feel like people that you would run into, but they're it feels just, like a it really doesn't. Yeah, no. Yeah. They, I, I honestly, I, I actually from the first viewing up until pff, probably a year ago when I was talking about it with Chris, I own, I, I, I was under the impression it was a mockumentary, mm-hmm. and Chris kind of brought it. Up. I was like, no, 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 that, that, that's a real person. That, that's not, that's not scripted, and it, it's, it really kind of, it really kind of takes you back, you know makes you step back and kind of realize like holy shit there's a person out there that's like this or persons <laughs> or, or people yeah, yeah in general <laughs> and like like yeah it, it it's it it definitely is a Chris's point it's very it's it's very empowering to see somebody who has so much passion about their art and wants to make their shit happen so badly like that that's definitely a great aspect but i mean until you realize it's real you kind of think oh well that's just like kind of a an extra thing to add into it you know what i mean so it was very it was interesting watching the movie again now knowing what's all, knowing what the gag is so to speak that is actually real and yeah. it, it it's kind of depressing but the, the reason happy in the same sense I see what you're saying that the reason it could be perceived as a mockumentary is because of Mark and like his eccentric behaviors yeah. and like his rants that he goes. Everyone's on. eccentric behavior yeah, it, in it, this movie. It's very not much, just Mark's. It's yeah. very much in the vein of like a Drop Dead Gorgeous or something like that, or or one of those other mockumentaries put out by, by that group. You know, it's kind of got that that surreal vibe to it. Okay, since we're on the subject now, this is the biggest criticism I've ever seen heard about this film from what reading about it, seeing it now. Okay, with these characters and how eccentric they are and how much of a big personalities they are, what was the tone of this film? Was it to be laughing at them or la- or, I don't or think so. kind I don't of think trying so. to endear themselves so. to these characters Endearing, that actually exist? I'll take that. Um, <laughs> okay. Go for it. <laughs> Passing it over to you, Kyle. <laughs> I'll take that. I honestly think um, the, the, the documentary filmmakers... Um, Saw something in him that you you don't normally see. I mean, there's a lot of people you meet. I mean, depending on what industry you're in. In, in, in our group, I mean, we 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 know a lot of artists, a lot of creative types. I mean, how many people do you know that has this much drive and this much passion? I mean, there's some people that have some percentage of it, but they usually abandon that idea at some point along the way, or they put it on the back burner for a long time and they don't keep going with it. They let other shit come up in their life. And yeah. So I think the the documentary filmmakers saw this guy and was like. Dude, he every single day he eats, sleeps, drinks, breathes filmmaking. Well, kind of. <laughs> kind of. See, I agree and disagree with that that statement. How could you disagree? Because he spent he spent so much of his life not making this film. I, I also think that part of it too is is like he has a definite fear of finishing projects. You think so? Oh, I think that's made abundantly clear throughout. The film. I I think it does it does eventually boil down to that that that's a point that's brought up by him even yep. I think so. Um, 
I totally agree with you, Kyle. Like I, everything you said is 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 right on with with the mood of what this film and the and what it's trying to say. Yeah. See, I think he has a I think he has a fear of actually finishing projects because it, like he already started Northwestern when when he was filming North or trying to start filming Northwestern again. He already started it. He started it six years prior. Oh yeah, he already shot quite a bit. It's just same thing with with Co- Coven. Coven was basically fucking finished. He needed like not that many more shots, and it took him. Another six years to finish that. Like, well, that was only and a it, see, but it, yeah, yeah, it yeah, seems like the, there's a pattern there to where he gets almost done and then he stops. Well, I want I want to give him I want I want give him some uh, to point out some of the hurdles that he had to go through. He he clearly had children mm-hmm. um, from a girlfriend that he had broken up with. And he made, makes mention that it was a big part of his life where he lost this girl. Right. Um, yeah. No, the, he had he, children. He had tons of debt. He had tons of debt. Yeah, he I mean, lived he with had, his mom in a trailer. Yeah, yeah. right, right. It's not like this guy had all the. They lived in the house. Yeah, he didn't have all of the uh, necessary requirements. He doesn't do have the thing. means. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, he didn't have the means to do it, and he just squandered it. He well, actually he had hurdles that he had. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Exactly. I think. Um. I, I. I think. I mean, going against what Cody was saying, that he has a fear of com- of completing. I mean, yeah, maybe he brought that up. He he did bring it up in the film. That there's like a, a certain fear about finishing a project just because once it's done, it's it's out there. That's all it is. But I think I don't really I don't really feel like he had the means really to like to complete it as quickly as he wanted to. I mean, he had what there there's scenes where him having casting sessions or 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 production meetings and nobody showed up. He's trying to get extras and only his friend Mike showed up. Yeah. Like like he was not dealt the right amount of cards he needed to finish the film as quickly as he could have finished uh, it. Again, he's 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 a uh he's a uh salesman in the uh, in the fact that he is always selling his stuff and what happens when he runs out of something to sell? He drinks. He he, he doesn't have anything. <clears throat> no, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. From what I got what, what I gathered on this movie. You take that one, Chris. <laughs> I want to take it back to what you were just what, what you were just saying. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I, w- I was saying something to the point that he didn't quite have the means available to him at all times. Yeah, he was always the odds were against him. I think a big part of that was because he had an alcohol problem. But they really say, touch on that. I, th- a I lot. think there's also more to that too. I think he he lived in Milwaukee. This is not. Anywhere near California. This is not anywhere near New York. This is not near the epicenters. What, of what does the we... location have to do with production of film? I mean, there's there's film like all over the country. You're talking about good actors. You're talking about good talent that are going to show up that want to be actors. You're not going to find that it's he's true. A, he people w- that he are would... serious about it. Let not me so say. Many. Let me say. But but even if he was closer to a place like L. A. or something like the people that do show up are going to demand money and he oh, has no money to pay me. Them. You could just do a Craigslist ask and get somebody to come. They don't come have out. Craigslist back then. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Fair Hold enough. Hold on. But here's 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 my thing for it because and I think it captures it perfectly well in the scene where he calls up a guy who uh, lives down the street and is so unwilling to help him to be an extra. And you can tell from, right. just from the phone conversation, absolutely. That I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say that a lot of people probably in the community that he was working with or or people in the neighborhood and stuff like that had probably been burned by him several fucking times. Ah. It's probably safe to assume that, yeah. I, I think so. so but, but but his core crew have stuck with him from like day one, though. So he he had like a tight knit group around him. But in terms of actors and stuff, like yeah, if maybe, you think maybe about it, though, them. they were all drinking buddies. Like all That's of them true. were, were party and drinking buddies. And Mark was just I like mean, his. He loved this thing, and he, and he basically rallied everybody. I mean, that there's he could there's a scene it. in the movie where where him and Mark are going to go pick up his other friend who helps him like shoot the movie. Kenny from Kenny from fucking jail. jail. Yep. <laughs> like he like <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know what? This brings up something very interesting, right? So Evil Dead was shot in Michigan. We know this, right? Yes. And then he shot it with his also his childhood buddies, yes. Bruce Campbell, yep. oh, right? The, yeah, the, just the a regular collection, cast. collection of friends, the yeah, collection yeah. of friends. That so what was this guy's problem? Living in a rural Milwaukee, Milwaukee. I'm sorry, that was different. How did he? I feel like do he was this? probably more disadvantaged than Sam Raimi's crew I, for some I, reason. I, I think. I, I, I mean, they were shouting on Vazo cams. They were doing. I, all kinds I agree of stuff, with what Chris but... was saying, though, just because I, I think Sam Raimi had. Um, from the little I've read, because I've read I, I, a little bit about that from like Confession uh, if, if Chins could, if Chins yeah, could yeah, kill, yeah, yeah. yeah. and. And he he points out like Sam Raimi's upbringing like like he was just he 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 was very supported by his 
by his family and his parents and everything. And I feel like this guy, he had maybe a little support at the front end. But for the most part, his family was just kind of like, nah, you should be fucking working I've, in a factory. I feel I like di- they're doing the best they can I to see, support it. That's kind of where I disagree with you. I feel uh, like I they too. did support it. He fucking squandered the money because his dad gave him ten grand for films. Yeah, he squandered the money. Oh, and so he's they, just not a good businessman. And they stopped giving. They, he's not no, a good money man. I don't think. I don't think it's that. I think like a lot of it had to do with the booze. Probably. No, I think it probably. did. It did. Let's be honest here. We have a few filmmakers here on this panel right now. If you got ten thousand dollars, what the fuck would you do with that money? Not to make, not put it into beer. Not put it into alcohol. beer. I don't, not I, put it into I wouldn't anything. do that. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't do that either. Now I'm not I, saying that we shouldn't give put him, it into this podcast. <laughs> I, 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 I want I want to say that I, I want to preference that I don't uh I don't, don't want to criticize him. People have problems in their life. They get a bunch of money and then sometimes yeah. they don't know how to deal with it. Some people are just bad with money. Yeah. But um, I'm not the best. But you know, ten thousand dollars a lot. To make at least Coven. Well, I think Coven. Sorry, no, he got money from Uncle Bill because nobody else would give. I think that's kind of the main story and what makes him the everyman in this, which I appreciate and what I relate to. Right, is that you can see the talent there. Excuse me, Jesus, I know. Throw up on air. Yeah, hey, you can see that. You can see the talent there, right? And you can see that he has the drive and want, but he has his vices just like everybody else does that can get in your way. Yeah, uh, I okay. think probably his biggest vice is probably his own. Like maybe he's just like like kind of just overly hard himself on, on himself, like every other artist is. I mean, we're we're, I mean, everybody in this room, I can I think I can honestly say uh, are creative types and artists of some sort. And I mean, your your worst your your biggest critic is always yourself. I think that's probably one of the things that held him back the most. Okay, like, I want to talk about something that you just said right now. Go ahead, shoot. You mentioned that uh, he had a lot of passion. Yeah, but I think. What's important? Uh, I'm trying to figure out if he had passion in terms of a fan that just wanted to make film, or passion in terms of somebody that had a realistic filmmaking understanding of how films are made. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like I don't under. Here's the thing I'm trying to figure out. There's a part of me that thinks that maybe he's not talented, and he had just had a really like bad his, Dunning Kruger syndrome. Like his passion's misplaced. Yes, exactly. There. Okay. Are, how many times have you met somebody that's like, yeah, I'm a great filmmaker. I love film. I've been watching all my life. But that doesn't mean that you're a great filmmaker. That's it true. It right. means that you might have a love for something, but that doesn't mean that you're, you're going to be a fantastic uh, sure. uh, podcast host. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> no, and I kind of want to get into more of that, but when we get back. This is ridiculous. We started May 94, man. We've got every F-stop known to man in the film. <laughs> and right now, we got to take action, man. we got to go out to that field, put those scarecrows in on a killer slant. You know, they've been there for years. The farm's burnt down. It's going to be the opening shots for Coven, you know? And uh, what is Coven? Coven's a 35-minute direct-market thriller film shot on 16-millimeter black-and-white reversal. Uh, it's uh, an alcoholic, man compelled to go to this group meeting by his one and only friends left but they're not that helpful the group you know you know about the group thing uh yeah okay so that's what we're doing a film on coven man we got to get this sucker done though seriously last night man i was so drunk i was calling morocco man calling trying to get to the hotel hilton at tangiers in casablanca man that's i mean that's that's pathetic, man. Is that what you want to do with your life? Suck down peppermint schnapps and try to call Morocco at 2 in the morning? That's senseless. But that's what happens, man. Oh, uh, We're back, and we're talking about American movies. So one of the things I wanted to get into that kind of to let into that is I uh, was saying that that Mark is, you know, an everyday man. Like, um, I feel like as artists, just in general, I'm just going to talk for artists in general. I know that's probably crazy, but I'm going to do that. Um, I feel like he is looking for what every artist is looking for. Success and to some degree. To some degree. Well, to feel to feel like you have the success to uh to where your life means something. Right? I feel like you, that was you, his you, ultimate. You goal. always want your art to um have some recognition, some sort of um you, you wanna be you want to be acknowledged in what you do. Yes. It's something that I believe about art. If you're just doing art for yourself, it's kind of like masturbation, really. Mm-hmm. Unless you're putting it out there. Oh, unless you're putting good. it out. Yeah, I, I I think it is. Because if if you if you're just writing a diary, like it's just for your own personal gain. It's just technically just artistic masturbation. 
if mm-hmm. you put it out there and put it up to public scrutiny, other let people them masturbate un- masturbate with you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> you want to make it pornography? Wait a no. minute. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> Hold on. I heard masturbation and then and woke <laughs> up. <laughs> what Hi guys, back. I'm back on the what show. What I'm saying about art is that I feel like the as an artist to not put your product up to public scrutiny to critical analysis to yeah. things of that nature uh-huh. like what are you doing it for mm-hmm. I what agree are with that. you doing it for I, would, I agree with that 100% I believe that every artist actually does put a little bit of themselves into every piece of art that they put out but if you're not putting it out there to the public what are you actually doing I don't I mean trying to get I, the demons out Mike that, I mean <laughs> uh, just on, actually I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback on that Mike uh, on Chris I mean Mike I, I, as a, as like uh, I don't really consider myself a musician, but I but I play but I've played guitar and different instruments. Most He's dabbled of my, most most of my life. Yeah, there, there's there's quite a bit of songs that honestly I don't have any desire to really put out there. I just I wrote them for me more right, than anything right, else. Right, right, right. more of a a, a a rebuilding thing or some kind. But of, but, it, but uh, is that a practice thing or is that something that you're looking for? Public opinion on something that you is is your baby something I that is that you. I haven't created something that I really honestly feel like is a, is something that I want to put out as public opinion. Now, that being said, writing a song on a guitar takes, you know, it could take 10 minutes of your time. It could, t- t- could take a few weeks of your time. Certainly, based but, on But But honestly, at. it really takes you sitting in your room doing it, making a film, you know, Getting getting multiple people involved in the matter, I mean that's completely different. That's a completely different fucking. That is thing. something we have to acknowledge: is that filmmaking is a collaborative art versus a painter or a musician, maybe yeah. uh, like that is a singular art where you can do it on your own. Going back to what I was saying, though, I think you kind of missed the the what I, what I was trying to hint at or or get to. I don't necessarily think his end game <clears throat> is not the film. The film is just a means, in my in my opinion, to get Northwest made. No, no, no. The film is just a means to get him to where he doesn't have to work the dream, where he doesn't have to work a nine to five. He doesn't have to shovel snow. He wants to get that forty. It, what do you say, forty five? He's thirty four thousand dollars to make Northwest. Thirty four thousand. No, I don't. Again, I don't. No, no, no. You're my, thinking, no, no you're Co- thinking, Co- Cody. What you, what film are you talking about? I'm not talking about ta- Northwest oh, or Coven. Just stop. You're not. I'm not talking about a fucking film at all. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm talking about him as a person in his whole Endgame. It is not about the film. If you think this movie is about just making the film, you're way fucking off. This movie is about him leaving that fucking shitty neighborhood that he fucking lives in and making it as someone. That is what he is trying to do and trying to achieve. And I think that that is what I I, I relate to as an artist. Yeah. That's why I think you're missing the point completely. He never makes it out of Milwaukee. Yes, he does. He's no. in movies today. He's still in Milwaukee. He's no, on- he's not. That movie got... The movie- he's still in Milwaukee to this day. Doc- I just watched a recent do- interview with document- him, and okay, he's still he in Milwaukee. I'm sure, okay, Milwaukee. so he owns a residency there, but I'm sure he's doing a lot better than living in his mom's I- fucking absolutely. house. Absolutely. I-, I agree with you that he's trying to make a better life for himself. I agree with that. But it- what, are we- what are we saying that his goal... I think his goal was... The American dream, like he says the whole time, the American dream. I, he stands in front of the houses and he's like, one of these days I'm going to have one of these. It's not going to look like this. It's going to be much flatter. He but. definitely does. And he, and he makes, it, makes a mention that I think his friend Ken says, mm-hmm. where he says he was always the guy that was like, yo, I'm going to make a million dollars and you're all going to look up to me. And we all kind of joked and around. His brother, his brother. I think it was his brother. You're right. <laughs> My God, his brother is so funny. The guy with the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, the, the eyes. guy with the eyes, the guy with yeah, the eyes, with the crazy eyes. You know eyes. what I'm talking about? Yeah, the crazy. No, I know exactly. Yeah, like I always on. thought he would grow up to be like a serial killer or something, and I thought it might have been like maybe <laughs> I would have been one of his be victims. The killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, oh my god! Obviously, they did not have a great relationship. I'll, I'll relate it to this way too. Um, this podcast. Let's take this for example. All right, for this to me is is it's a hobby and it's a passion. It's a love. It's something that I love to do. It's something that. Um, that I was influenced by by other people. Like, I feel like Mark was influenced by other people that he wanted to do, too. Yeah. But I don't, I'm not going to deny that my dreams that, the, you know, millions of people listen to me a day and I can do this for, for a living. I think that's basically what his thing was. Th- these movies were his vessel to get to that to that point in his mind. Now, did he necessarily get there? I think that's what this film is about. Um but I think that's really his motivation. I don't think the movies really are the focal point. I think it's his struggle with, with accepting where he's at in the world and his placement in the world. Yeah. As far as meaning like his life. In his mind, if he's a famous film director, 
his life has meaning, right? People yeah. know who he is, and it's, he's important. And, he's and not cleaning up people's shit. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's not a, a, a nobody, which I think every one of us either has a fear or has to settle I, with well, I at some th- point in their life. I agree with you, because even when he's doing his breakdown on that whiteboard and he erases it and whatever, like the way he breaks it down... Sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. When he says, like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't to fuck this shit. You know, he gets really <laughs> mad about it, but... Let's be honest, like, what is it, 35000 35, yeah. 34500 That is not, <laughs> that is not anything that I've ever heard any filmmaker that I know have said, like, <laughs> if I can just make $34,000. If I don't get that, no. I don't the mean price shit. of a Honda Civic. No, no. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, can, I can make my life better. No, honestly, because, because, I mean, a lot of the filmmakers I've known have just been like, all right, let's just fucking do it. And we'll figure it out along the way. Nickel Diamond, as much as he can, he's got this weird number set in his well, head. Well, he's got, he, he does have a huge that he, that, yeah. he, that he thinks is going to be his secret to success. But it's incredibly modest. No, you know why though, right? Because the movie's already halfway done. Well, that that and because that wasn't again that wasn't for just the movie. That was to get him out of debt to pay people off. That's exactly and what he, he was would, trying to do. And he would start basically fresh. Would would at the point that he's at. Would be a fucking restart and be like yeah, a, yeah. a number one goal. So thirty four thousand dollars, yeah, is is is, is a reason to him is a reasonable. I get where he gets that number. I want to propose something to Chris too as well. Uh, this question, propose. Yeah, because you he, said I promote. Do. Here, he, <laughs> promote it too. Here's a question from Mike. This podcast is brought to you by a question from Mike. <laughs> Mike, Thank you. what's your question? My question is, <laughs> we're going back. We're bu- we're going back on this whole thing. I I don't. I don't deny that he's trying to make a better life for himself. He's got like what two, three kids, something yeah, like that. I think three, yeah. Three, he's, yeah. He's in debt. He's in massive debt. Well, at least yeah. for for nineteen eighty one, eighty one dollars. No, no, no <laughs> but, but I'm he, just fucking he with said you. like <laughs> like ten thousand or something like that. He 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 rails it off. He owns a shitload to his father. Yeah, right. He owns a bunch of money. He wants to pay those debts off, and that's commendable that he actually wants to pay these debts off. He's not yeah. trying to freeload off anybody. I want to give him credit for that, but. He is trying to make Northwest, is he not? Yeah, that's the that's that the major the goal. Game. That's the major goal. Because yeah. make Northwestern. Because Northwestern is going to make him the money to where Yeah, it's he... a feature and it's going to get him re- recognized, it's going to get him the fame and going to get him the distribution. Northwestern is like his way out, which I think is the dream for every artist, right? Of course, everybody no, wants okay. to know. No, everybody every wants to make a feature. To... We we talk about this um... well, uh, feature. Uh, well, we're talking about artists. But so Cody, say, Cody, uh, Cody, Cody. Sorry, dude. No, listen. I don't think that. I think where you're coming from is like you're saying like, oh, his only goal is to make money in this and that. You're, but but it does come from a passionate place. He grew up making films. I mean, this is not like the the goal wasn't always just to be that it was for fun with his friends and like actually doing this and then he was like oh i really enjoy it but now how can i monetize i i'm sorry if i explained it that way to where it's just like uh, all about making money i don't think that i i really don't think that i don't think it's about really the money at all i think it's mostly about his status or, or what he feels his status should be um and how he feels about himself as an artist and, and I the wa- recognition that he gets i want to agree with you on that because there is nothing, there's no greater motivator than being backed against a fucking wall. Yeah. And mm-hmm. feeling like, this is my last shot. This is one thing I'm good at. Mm-hmm. The one thing I'm good at is maybe making films or maybe writing or maybe whatever you do. To be backed against that wall and say, like, I got this w- I got this lottery ticket that I think is worth something. And I guess I can cash it and see what's worth I think that's a huge thing. And I think that is it, something that Mark is dealing with this whole film. Oh, he says it to he says it to Bill when they're in the car and they're and he's talking about financing the film and giving him the the money and he's like he's like that's not the outlook basically to have on life like you know like uh, I forget the exact line that he says but he basically says like don't you basically want to contribute to something and be a part of something yeah basically yeah um and I feel like yeah that's that's what it is. like for uh, Again, this is I relate personally to this movie because I, I can see myself um, in him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, um, I think they were the best on-screen couple. Um, Uncle, him and Bill, uh, um, Mark and Uncle Bill, dude. <laughs> they were so, so fucking. You good. couldn't make those people. Bill, <laughs> Bill wanted nothing to do with giving him money. <laughs> no, but he lo- kind of loved it too. But at the same and, time, and, 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 yeah, and exactly. Not only that, but at the end of the film, it's his dying wish. Yeah, well, he gave him fifty grand. He uh, gives him fifty grand yeah. to make this film, Northwestern, which, yeah, for the sake of the podcast and 
now that we're doing this, what, two decades later, basically, um, he never makes this film, but looking at his IMDb, he actually gets some pretty significant uh, acting roles, as well as... Well, significant... I mean, that loose term? Better than anybody else. L- let me list some of the films that he's done. He was in The One with Jet Li. He was in... Um, did, he, did he play Shop Clerk 2? <laughs> or Shop Clerk Number 1? He was a he was a character named Caesar. Oh, he had a name. Ooh, he Caesar. Was, he was in, that's a, that's he a... was in Cabin Fever 2. Okay. As a character named Herman. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did a slew of weird kind of like, I guess, what, what, what we would consider B-list films. Mm-hmm. Uh, zombie Killer, Big D and the Kids at the Table. There's, there's okay. whoa, whoa. Zombie Island. He did. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but let, let's wait, wait, wait. We're we're all we're all laughing about Big this right D. now. No, Big D and I'm the Kids la- at the Table. I was laughing at that title. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a horror movie. To me, Mike. <laughs> it sounds like very horrifying. <laughs> it's a short, Who's by the Big way. Big D and why are there kids surrounding? I have him? no idea, but he played a character <laughs> named as the as the Grave Digger. But what I'm saying is, is that he he's. He's acting up until this time. Like, right now, he has announced films called Scare Me, I Am an Alien, trying to test... Well, both the more, the, more the scarier for. No, scare, me, <laughs> scare Me is his movie. <laughs> scare both me is him and Mike Shank were on a Family Guy episode. Yeah, they were on Family yeah. Guy episode. As an actor, he has 29 credits. I mean, he, he and, he, and he's actually currently trying to do a film called Scare Me, yeah. which is an announced film that he's trying to I do. Wanna, I want to find that movie. So even though the fact... even the, what, Okay, I just want to preface this. While I was watching this film, here was the, th- the big fear that I had. As I was watching this film, I saw Mark, and I saw the passion that he had for filmmaking. Mm. The whole time I'm questioning, what's the difference between him and F- Sam Raimi? Like, does he really... <sighs> Last <Okay>. names? <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I want to pose to everybody at this, <laughs> at this table right now as filmmakers and stuff. To what extent <laughs> stuff. <you're, laughs> to what extent is filmmaking as an art something that is God, what's the word I'm trying to use? Something that's ingrained in you as a human being, as an artist, what does it take to make it? Is it something that is born within you? Or I don't is it know. something that you can grow? Because I there's no question in my mind that he is very passionate about film. Well, it's passion it's passion it. mixed with talent. That's the only way you make it. Right. But my question oh. is, is he talented and he just has a bunch of passion? I think he's passionate and he's not and he's not talented. talented. Right. This is the question that He'd I have about it. He'd probably be a great producer. It. Yeah, See, I think so. And he, he would be a, he would be a, a great sales guy. I kind of like, he could he could will sell. He? No. he could sell. I feel like he could sell a movie to a produ- to a studio. Because I'm really freaking out about this personally in my own life. Why are you good? Tr- are you feeling like you're Mark? Are you Mark? Who's who's your Mike? I feel like Mark. Who's Mike times? Shank? Here's Chris a- Willenbrecht. Wait, hold on. <laughs> this is the great thing I think about this film. The thing I love about this film is that any a, all of us have a little mark in us. Yeah. No, I know. No, the that's, idea of we that's, have a dream. That's the heart of the film. Honestly, I think that it, Mark is the heart of this. There's film. no doubt in my mind that the reason this film is connected with cult film audiences is because there are people out there that are artists and look at this guy and say, "Am I this guy?" Yeah. Oh, Do I, I said ha- that. Are all are all the obstacles against me? Can I ever make anything of my life? And if he doesn't make it, what does that say about me? That's an interesting thing you bring up because that 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 identifying like am I am I this guy? Because I mean, honestly, as an artist, you look at me like, am I this guy in the sense that I have zero talent and a shitload of passion, or am I this guy that I have a, sh- a shitload of talent but zero passion? Like, it, it definitely is something that makes you take a step back and really think about it and really reflect upon yourself. Like, should I be doing more for my art, for my craft, for my art, for the thing that I love? And where you stand as well is another thing that you, you just said. The thing that you said, am I talented and no one's recognizing me, or am I not talented and that's the reason why no one's recognizing me. Yeah, and it's all based on this whole. It's, it's this weird thing with being a, an artist, being being a creative type. You 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 fight yourself so much. You wit you wish you knew how how good you were. You think you're the best. You you think you're the worst. And and, and this movie really brings that shit out. So I, I agree with Cody and you. I, this movie is really really strikes a chord with you deeply. It hits a nerve because that you, I mean you you have to stop and take a look at yourself. Like, well, fuck, what am what haven't I done or what should I have done so far in my life 
to make my dreams come true a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like, and this guy is that fucking golden shining example of like, even if he doesn't have the fucking skill, God damn it, does he have the fucking passion? Mm-hmm. And I would give anything to even have a quarter of the amount of fucking energy and passion that he has. Cody, you have something to say? I was gonna say that uh, I-, I think um, I-, I disagree in a little bit of a way. I think he is talented. Uh, and I think he does have the passion, uh, but he also had uh, at this time, at least I don't know now. Um, he had his vices, and his vices were his undoing. I I really believe that because the guy can talk, like his brother said. Um, and then it w- I feel like I don't again. I don't know if it, there's a there's obviously something there's a disconnect there for him. He has the, he has the passion, but doesn't finish projects, right? Um. And, and he obviously has some somewhat of talent because from what I saw in his films in the clips that they show in this movie, uh, I've seen worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've seen way too. worse. It's not bad. I mean, he's got an eye. So I yeah, mean, he does. He does. He definitely. Has I want to say eye. that he does. All the shots were shot he's, well. He's really good at. He's really good at taking the things that he that inspire him and kind of uh, molding them into his own image. So that's 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 an admirable talent. I kind of asked the question while watching that was, is it like, is it the people that he surrounds himself with that also brings him down? Because maybe, like, if he was around a higher level talented of people instead of, uh, you know, Mike, who's an amazing guitarist, um, Kenny, who, who uh, went to jail, and he was around, uh, like, uh, Bruce Campbell, and because we used that reference earlier, Bruce Campbell, uh, what's his name, Robert uh, uh, Tapper, Tapper, mm-hmm. uh, and those kind of people, would he have succeeded like Sam Raimi? I'm gonna actually go and say maybe not because of his personality type. His personality type, he's very strong. Like, I mean, the 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 best example I'm gonna give to answer your question is the discussion he has with that actor about the description, the 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 pronunciation of his film. Is it Coven or is it Coven? Like. He is the type of person that he gets locked in and dead set an idea. And somebody like a Robert Tappert or somebody like a Bruce Campbell would obviously bring extra stuff to the party to help make the vision bigger. And I don't know if he's the kind of person that's going to be able to be like, okay, that I, that's actually a good idea. I'm going to take that and then incorporate that in my film. Or is he going to be a total control freak and be like, no, this is the way it is. This is how it's pronounced. This is how the title of the film is pronounced. Fuck you! Like this is how he's got to be in control. That but that's also he has to be in control. So I don't think being around. I think the people he had around were the best because they were very uh, subservient to him. Let's not say they're the best, but no, they were. No, the, for they him, were the best for his situation. The best for his situation. They were subservient to him. Who was your favorite character? Mike. 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 Mike, Mike Shank. Yeah. Yeah. Was... I, Uncle Bill is probably oh, well, my oh, Uncle Bill's yeah, number two. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that's true. Mike and Uncle Bill are right at the Uncle Bill's song. Is the most depressing thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that like poem thing. It's he like yeah, where he's just talking about his wife dying, and yeah. he's just it's super sad. Yeah, it is crazy, and <laughs> I but I love that Mark engages with him like he's just not old. He's really? just you can tell. Dude. Look, see this girl? She wants to be in your film. Oh my god! Take a look at that, Bill. What Take do you think about that? that? Yeah, you're the executive producer. Yeah. Oh, you know the she whole wants time to be in your film, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time I was watching this film, being that I'm the only one on this panel that has seen the film for the first time. Um, I don't know if anybody had this same thought when they were first watching the film. I was really worried that he was just taking advantage of Bill. And then when you see the connection, it's so clear that he's not. And yeah, he no, actually does love it's Bill. It's just an interesting, it's just an I interesting think, dynamic of character. Well, he's giving the guy a bath and washing his clothes and yeah, stuff, and you're just like, wow, the, that's really I like... I am washing the Bill's clothes is. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to give credit to the to 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 the director of this film um, for kind of drawing that out a little bit. No, he 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 recognized like what was going no, on. No, because I think I think at the beginning of the film you can definitely make that conclusion. You're like, oh well, this guy's just trying to to suck money out of his uncle so right. he can make his I film. I never, you know, honestly, I never got really? that vibe. I, I did. I got it at the very beginning of the film, and then and then as the film goes on, especially after the the. The, the the scene where he gives him a bath and they actually just kind of get drunk together and hang out, mm. you kind of realize, like, no, this is his friend and he has a real connection with this guy mm. and he actually really does love him very much yeah. and you can tell that. I always got the vibe, I, I don't know why, but I always got the vibe that, like, Bill... Um, because from the, from the first few scenes where he's trying to get money from Bill, it's like Bill's always been kind of like... No, you know, he, he's like, I'm not going to give him money, I'm not going to give him money, but he, but he does it in a way where it's kind of like... 
I'm just kind of fucking fucking with this guy. I'm giving him shit. Like I'm gonna give him money anyway, but I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna give it to him easy. I'm gonna make him fucking earn it. You know what I mean? Like that's a feeling I Maybe. got from Bill. Like. Oh, that was just me, though. That was my Yeah, question. but at the same time, there's a couple times where I'm like, does Bill even know what room he's in? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Bill, ben, is, Bill is pretty ancient. It's <laughs> very clear that Bill is, um, I hate to say it, boarding on the, on, the air, uh, on the level of senility. What is that? Meaning, like, he, he's not all there. Why well, uh, can I gotta use fan, fancy names? He's, he's like in big words. He's in the big, big he words. Got a, he got that college education. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta pay for it. Gotta I disagree. Pay for it I disagree with that. Actually, I think Bill's got I all too. his wits there. He's I think his body sharp. just doesn't work. He like, has a he has a hard time understanding how. I think he's the account fucking that with he's him. built that he that he's putting out in the beginning of the film. How his fi- how his money is getting taken out? No, I I honestly disagree with you. I think he's fucking with everybody, and and and, and honestly, he. Oh, you think like, he's trolling people? Yeah, I think he's trolling them. <laughs> I, I think, don't know. I, think, I mean, I, don't know. I mean, even even the, there's that scene where Mark's talking about like making great cinema, and Bill's response is cinnamon, cinnamon? Yeah. and it's like he's obviously knows what Mark's talking about, but he's gonna fuck with him and make him fucking yeah. work harder at it. <laughs> and my that might even be oh my god, that might even be like the fucking secret to Mark getting his shit together is Bill constantly challenging him. Him and not just giving hmm. it to him, making him hmm. fucking work for it and making him actually earn the money he needs to make the movie. That'd be interesting. Will we ever know? Unfortunately, I don't know. no. I don't no. think so, but that, that's no, one no, way you can... We know. Can... He's done well for himself. He's Mark's done, done well, for well for himself. Yeah, he's done well for himself. Yeah, and Mike's good, too, though. Mike, ex-drug addict, complete. Yeah. <laughs> complete, just like... He looks so uncomfortable on camera. It's great. Yeah, he, but he's that so... That smile is the <laughs> most beautiful thing captured on film. It's, pr- it's precious. He, he's it easily is. the most... <laughs> I think he's the most endearing character Oh, in my God. Entire... He's like a little kitten. You just want to protect him from I do, the, I the do. danger. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if I had a bottle of vodka or he had a bottle of vodka, but we were drinking vodka together and best <laughs> friends. <laughs> it's like, don't get me wrong. I would love to hang out with these guys and talk, talk film. Like, I would, too. I I would love to sit down and interview them. It's, a, it's the first line of the film, man. It's got to be on the money here. Roll down the window, Bill. It's all right. Uh... Okay, cut. All right, man. Shit. It's, you got to give it some passion, too, man. And you got to, it's all right. It's okay. There's something to live for. Oh. Jesus told me so. <laughs> it's all right. Um, uh, there's something to live for. Jesus told me so. Okay, great, Bill, but we gotta, we have to have fluidity in there. It's all right. It's okay. Uh... All right, guys, we're back, and we're talking more about American Movie. Um, it's been all about feelings tonight. <laughs> Which, no, is uh, gonna go into my rating, so, um, I'll explain more of that later. Um... What do you, I'll ask this question because there seems to be argument over this, and I want to get everybody's answer. So try to make it short and sweet. Don't elaborate. Just give me what you think. Uh, what do you think is the overall? What do you think this film is trying to say? I think this film's trying to just say that, like, no matter what you do, you just just be passionate and 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 work towards something that you believe in. Honestly, like. Like it, it's really easy to come up with a great idea and then abandon it like very shortly after once you realize how much work is involved in it. But I think I think this guy Mark really he he makes me wish I was as passionate about anything as much as he is. He I'm he I I don't know about talent. Talent's a completely different thing in there, but passion passion can take you pretty far though. Chris, what do you think this film's about? Yeah, I agree with most of that. I think it's about just uh, doing instead of saying you're going to do it. Like, even if it does take you a long time, like, being committed to something. Mm -hmm. And, like, so what? You're trying to reap the the reward of that. But but it's just about being that dedicated to something that you're willing to put all your time, energy, and effort into. And it doesn't die. Like, as long as you, like, you know, you can remember you've loved this thing. And this is what you want to do. And this is what you connect with. Yeah. Mike? I'm very conflicted in this film. On one aspect of it, I want to agree with Chris and uh, Chris and Kyle. I want to say that if you follow your dreams and you just stay steadfast in that area, that you can make your dreams happen and things will eventually materialize into something that you can tangibly see. But there's also a part of me, which I think is the elephant in the room with this film, is whether or not is he just lucky that a documentary filmmaker 
found him and made a film? I want to believe no. And I don't believe that is necessarily the message of this film. I think the message of this film is that everybody, no matter what artist you are, painting whatever, you're always going to be questioning whether or not you're good, and motivation is always a problem. Can you motivate yourself to make your dreams happen? I think that Mark does that fantastically. I think he comes to a point, I think that's where this film starts off, is that Mark has squandered a little bit of his time and says, you know what, never mind, I'm going to make this short film hell or high water. And he does it. And I got to commend him on that. And I think he's a true film lover. But there is a part of me that wonders whether or not he would have gotten that shot if he didn't have this film made for him. So, but is that... That's that, that's more of a hindsight. Than yeah, I don't else. know if that's really the the. the see here here is it though because yes. we wouldn't they have didn't s- know yes. this film was going to be successful. Nobody knew that it would be successful. Absolutely, but understand understandably enough, at the same aspect, no one would have seen this film if it weren't successful. <laughs> so at the same time, it's uh, like I think you're I think you're I like, think it's also retroactively retroactively thinking about something uh, you're that get, we you're, never you're, would have seen this film basically you're saying I think you're overthinking you have it. to <laughs> uh, is there something you like about this film that would make it good and make people want to say that the, I'm not saying that the message is not solid because I think it's very solid what do you think the message is because I think that you missed the mark on saying that I think you've kind of described what you think of the filmmaker rather than what you think the message of the film is no I think the message yeah. is very solid I think, what do you, but what do you what think is that the is? Because I, I, I disagree with I think, you too. I think the message is is that everybody has these hurdles that they have to go overcome, and I think that Mark makes an attempt at doing that. But how many have faltered in their life despite good intentions of trying to pass those hurdles? We all know that the film industry is a very difficult thing to break into. It's not something that everybody gets into. I think there are great filmmakers out there that probably will never get seen, and they fade into obscurity. Sure. And I think it's a very sad thing. But that's because filmmaking is a business. Okay. And if that's the case, then the only reason that Mark got Coven seen, Coven, whatever, is because this documentary that he did not direct got him to that point. Okay, so, again, I I feel like you're going off on a... Uh, on a different point that you want to make, uh, but here's I'll go with I'll give you mine right because where I disagree with you guys, where I think you guys are saying this film is more about passion, and that's kind of what they're trying to display. Uh, my personal belief is yes, it's kind of about passion, but I also believe what they're trying to display is the fear of um, the, the the fear that you're just not going to turn into anything, the fear that as you grow older you want to make something of your life. And um, that's what I think his fear is. Like he wants to make something of his life, and this, you know, this is the last chance he has to do it. Um, in his mind, and if he doesn't make it, he's never going to make it, and that's a huge fear for him. And I think that's why he doesn't finish products. I think that it to me was the overall message of of you don't, you can't fear, you shouldn't fear the unknown. I guess I, I should say is what the overall message you, is I got from it. I want to, I want a hundred percent agree with you. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to get very personal about this. Um, this is listed as a comedy to some extent, I'm, I'm guessing. Documentary. It's a documentary. Yeah. A documentary comedy. <laughs> I never laughed one point in time in this entire documentary. Oh, God, I laughed so really? hard. I fucking laughed. Just no, I, I didn't because of exactly what Cody said. Because I think there is a level of fear that comes with success because you're held accountable for what you put out. Right. And um, maybe that's something that p- pulled him back. Maybe it's the fact that he had kids and he had to pay child support and all these other things. That there are definitely... Um, like roadblocks. Roadblocks, like real roadblocks that are not internalized, not psychological roadblocks that you have. But I do agree with Cody. I think there is a hindrance that this film shows that success can be very scary. And he talks about the, it all the time, but he talks about it in such a grandiose way about I'm going to make millions one day and you're all going to fucking laugh. You're all going to. It's the type of thing that dreamers say. It's not the type of thing that realists say. Realists say, I just want to make a film. Yeah. All right. So uh, Bottles of Vodka is what we're going to rate this. I'll go first. Um, and this is kind of going to be where uh, I'm going to give it five. 
And the reason I'm going to give it five is because if you've listened to this podcast all the way through, uh, God bless you. Um, <laughs> and also, uh, if we all had that different of opinions of what this story is about, I think that's a pretty fucking successful film to where it would make us all feel something different and open us up to have this conversation as, 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 as the directions that it went in the 900 directions that it went, but we all felt something different and we all grabbed something different from this film is a sign of great, great filmmaking. So I would give this five bottles of vodka because in my opinion, this is one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. It's entertaining. It's funny as hell. Um, it's scary as hell. Um, it's if you're an artist at all, it, you, it, I feel like it will. Even if you're not an artist, I think this is just it hits home. Um, but it does it in a way with such grandiose characters and such crazy characters. Um, it kind of feels safe in a way too. Um, so five, five bottles of vodka for me, hands down. Kyle. I don't know, man. I think I might go... Shit, I might go five. I might go five on this film. Um, this movie this movie definitely um, it provides such a, an interesting um, look into the life of another artist. Um, it, granted, this movie's hilarious, I think, first and foremost. I think it's really funny to watch. He's a great character. But it definitely proposes a lot of um, feelings that I've had just growing up and and just trying to kind of create something and make something myself and i find it kind of in, a kind of a inspiring movie at the same time I find it a bit of a depressing movie it's depressing because i mean i don't honestly think this guy has the talents that quite match his um passion um so that that's depressing to me but i find it inspiring because of the level of passion he has because he yeah maybe he took some time off between making stuff but when he put his fucking mind to making something he fucking like went balls in Nobody showed up as extra, so he just shot himself and had his mom film it. Like he did what he had to do to get it done, and I think that's that's quite commendable as a, a, a thing as um, as a filmmaker or any kind of creative type. So I'm gonna give it five. This is a great movie. Anybody who wants to, anybody who's in any creative field, not 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 even just making movies, but anybody who's any kind of creative type, I think feel like should they should at least view this movie at least once and kind of project a little bit onto somebody else. It gives you an opportunity to project your life onto somebody else or have somebody else's life project on you and kind of makes you look inside a little bit. And maybe it gives you the strength to move forward and kind of go forth and do the thing you want to do instead of talking about it or thinking about it. Like it might, maybe it will embolden you to fucking be more. So I'm going to give it five. This is a great movie. Mike. Yeah, I'm going to give it five as well. Uh, one of the reasons I love this film which is, I think, is reflected in both Cody and Kyle's uh, review of this film as well, is that um, why I'm giving it five is a completely different reason why they're giving it five, which I think is the great thing about art, which I think this film fucking totally is. You look at a piece of art, and it reflects in you with it, with you, within you internally, mm -hmm. and you take something different from it based on where you're at in your own current life. Personally, when I saw this film, I didn't think I was going to give it a five. Uh, I already had this this rating in my head. Um, by the end of it, had I not looked at IMDb, the whole time I was like, oh, please finish Northwest. That was the whole thing I was thinking because I was rooting for this character so goddamn much to succeed. And when I saw that he actually does have a fairly lucrative career that is even extended even to 2016, where he's at least acting and trying to make films, I am so happy that that has happened. Like, I wanted this guy to succeed so much. If it didn't happen, I think I would have wept. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not lying about that. You're laughing about no, it. No, I I'm agree serious. with you. I, I, I do. I really, really, really wanted him to do it. So, yeah. yeah, five, 100%. Five bottles of vodka, which I might have to do if I ever watch this film again. I might have to down five bottles of vodka <laughs> Shit. and cry and weep in my own bed. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I should put, like, sparks flying off of this rating board. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we haven't gotten to yours yet, no, so let's let's say the fireworks. All right, let's see. Wait, three? No, <laughs> no. One uh, and a half. This this half mo this movie I've always loved, and most for all the reasons that you guys have already named, especially you know the the character development, like that we, the the people we follow, uh, they're very interesting people, and it it does put a smile on your face, and it does make you sad at some points, and it kind of makes you hopeful, and it takes you on this like roller coaster of emotions. Um. Yeah, and it, it like 
as a filmmaker or as somebody involved with film, like you see the hard work and dedication that does go into that. It might not be good. You might not like it, but you see how hard somebody works to get something that they want. And, uh, I, you know, it, it de- it's like when you go see a band, you want to go home and like play the guitar. Mm-hmm. It's like, I watch this movie and I go, I can make, I can do that. Why am I not, what am I doing with myself right now? Why am I not acting on this moment to go create this thing that I really care about? So five, dude. Yeah, this film will always be a five. I think it's one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. This might, be, our, this might be our highest rated film I that think we've it, ever done on this I podcast. I think it is the highest I rated film. I think it is. Yeah. Um, uh, with that being said, uh, it's kind of crazy, too, just to reflect back on this episode because I think we just basically uh, might have to do a part two at some point for this film because we only talked about really one character. I think, uh, yeah, I think one yeah. person in the film. Yeah, yeah. I, th- so, I, I think there's enough material. We we could come back and yeah, and we do didn't quote one. enough. Yeah, we didn't even we didn't even get to quotes. Like, that's there's yeah. so goddamn many if, in this it, movie. It, so. it, yeah, if you like good quotes, things you can say. <laughs> oh my god, to your friends, yeah, it's full of them. It's I, I know this. I, I feel like this episode's not going to do this movie justice, um, but the ratings will. Just see it for yourself if you haven't seen it. Um, if you've seen it, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> I feel like yeah. So if, that's you're, our, if you're a filmmaker, see it for Christ's yeah. sakes. Mm-hmm. I mean Jesus. <laughs> so that's our show for this week, guys. You can follow us on Instagram at Colt Film underscore Review. You can follow us on Twitter at Colt Film underscore Review. You can follow Kyle at. You can follow me on Colt Film underscore Kyle on Instagram. You can follow Chris at. You can go check out MidnightReleasing.com. Uh, we've got some new movies coming up. You can also follow me on Instagram at oh, Colt Film what? underscore Chris. What's the movie of the week? Uh, movie of the Dooms Chapel Horror. What's there it called? Go. Dooms Chapel what? Dooms Chapel. The Dooms Chapel Horror. Dooms oh, okay. Chapel. It's really good. Horror. Okay, I so thought it was W H. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I tell you too. the quick rundown. <laughs> I did too. I did too. Kid grows up in a small town. Brother dies getting cut up in a wood chipper. Uh, that the town kind of blames it on him. He goes back after like college to revisit the town. Same old, same old uh, story. Yep, you know? and uh, <laughs> and uh, basically he's confronted by basically a cult that lives in the town. Oh, a coven. A coven, yes. A coven. It's <laughs> coven. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's 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 cool. It's cool. Very nice. You can follow Mike yeah! at Mike Salustio on Twitter. You can uh, possibly read me sometimes when I feel motivated on friendlyneighborhoodfilmmaking.com when I decide to write about film. Cool. Hopefully I can. Hey, yeah, why not? Maybe you write Motivate about me. Maybe, maybe why, I'll write about this film. Why don't you, I was going to say, why don't you write about this film? Maybe I will. I think this film falls in line with your content. I think it's exactly what my content is. Movies all that about. make me sad.com. <laughs> <laughs> that should be my blog. Powder. <laughs> Gotta change it. Powder. <laughs> powder. That's like the second time powder's come up recently. <laughs> powder. Why is powder? Powder's I'm just hitting the, the, the <laughs> rings around I'm the house. Is that a cult to, film? Uh, Can we do that? One? Yeah. It's, a, it's a cult film because it's joked about. Listen, I told you there's great films that came out in the 90s. Michael. Powder. <laughs> Phenomenon. Absolutely. We covered Phenomenon. this last Very episode. Good. Very good film. <laughs> well, Anything with uh, uh, Dragonfly. Uh, Travolta. Or whatever the hell that in the is. 90s. Yep. Dragonfly, yep. <laughs> yeah. Face <laughs> Off. <laughs> Mothman Prophecies. Yeah. Good That's one. actually a good, good movie. One. Good one. That's a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Richard All right, guys. Here, guys. <laughs> That's our show for the week. Um,. So thanks for listening to all our personal issues. And uh, just remember, if you're going to join a cult, make sure they watch good movies. We'll see you next week. <laughs>